stories are all this time. Some are made up. What you're about to hear actually happened. Not so far away. century ago. This true story comes from Roberta Simpson Brown. Back when she was just a little girl. I grew up in southern Kentucky where the air smelled like cow manure and you could see for miles. When I was in the first grade, my mother would walk with me past the cornfields, the cemetery, the neighbor's pasture, all the way to school on her way to work out in the fields. I loved the walk and I loved my school. The schoolhouse was older than dirt and if our county had any money, they would have torn it down to build something safer. Because of that, every so often, when a big storm rolled in, my teacher would send all of us children home because the power would cut in and out and it just wasn't safe to be there. On such days, because my parents worked, our kind neighbor, Jim Cravens, would come walk me home. The storms terrified me, and his presence always made me feel much better. I called him my storm walker. He always held my hand, and if the rain was really pouring, he would give me his umbrella while allowing himself to get completely soaking wet. Through the second grade, third grade, fourth grade, and fifth, there wasn't a single day of inclement weather that passed where my storm walker wasn't right beside me, keeping me safe. As time moved on, everyone got a little older. My parents had more gray hairs. Jim Cravens was slowing down and having coughing fits. And I, I was finally confident to walk myself the whole way there and back to school. I was confident when the weather was nice. One day, while I was at school, the biggest storm of the year rolled in. The sky quickly grew dark. The clouds looked fierce and angry and we could see a tornado on the horizon. My teacher told us all to go home immediately. And although I was terrified, I figured I could beat the rain if I ran. But the rain came suddenly. The wind flapped my dress around. And I only made it as far as the great oak before it seemed perilous to continue. The tree's branches and leaves provided some break from the winds and rains. I closed my eyes and I held to the trunk. Suddenly, I heard a faraway voice. And as I peered around the oak, I heard Jim Craven's voice. I couldn't see him, but his voice was clear. Run away from the tree, he said and I listened. I ran towards my storm walker, and once again, his words came through, <coughs> came through the sounds of the storm. Get down into the ditch, keep your head down, and don't look up. I couldn't see much through the sheets of rain, but I followed and down into the ditch as the winds picked up. I couldn't help but look up, and only a moment later, I saw a tornado twisting its way across the land. It angled towards the tree which I had just stood under, and with a deafening crack, 